Yo! Good morning YouTube. What is going on? Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update about where I'm at on my holiday cut. So that's what the vlog is going to be about today. A little bit of an update on what I'm at, what I'm doing with diet and kind of where I'm going and I suppose my progress thus far. It is almost 10 o'clock and I've had a decent night's sleep. My sleep has been all over the place this past week because of my client times. I've been up early, I've been up late and that has done nothing for my food. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. My food has been up and down this past week and I can 100% say it's down to my sleep patterns. Any night that I get a really, really bad sleep, I find now, I don't know about you guys, so comment below and let me know if this is, if you're like this, but any night I get really, really bad sleep, my appetite is through the roof the next day and that's happened like four days this week I've only had like maybe four and a half five hours sleep and that's because I'm up late working I've had all of my client programming to do for June July and I've had a load of new clients come on in the month of May so between June and July I'm getting all of those people ready and onboarding all those people so I've been under a lot of pressure with my one-to-one -one clients this week and my online clients so therefore bad sleep up late up early and my appetite has been severely severely affected last night Brilliant sleep. The night before, brilliant sleep. Yesterday, food, bang on. Like genuinely, my food was perfect yesterday. I almost like even, I trained twice yesterday. Trained once here and then trained on Dublin. And I found that I wasn't even hungry. Like I found that even though I trained quite high and my volume was quite high, um, like my appetite wasn't even there. Not for any other reason, bar I can put it down to having a decent night's sleep and then my appetite just coming back down to normal. When I came home from Dublin last night, I actually, not, I didn't have to force myself to eat, but I knew I had to eat because I had trained, um, I had trained quite hard yesterday, so I had made sure that I got a good source of protein in, and I made sure I got a good, decent amount of carbs in. So, I ate last night, even though I wasn't hungry, but I knew I needed to eat, so, that's kind of what I did last night. Stayed, hit my calories last night, which was perfect. Weight-wise, I'm actually down three kilos in the last two weeks which is good I have a goal in my head that I want to get to before my holidays now my holidays are July 20th around the uh, around maybe six or seven maybe I think maybe seven weeks from today I have, a, I have a goal in my head that I want to get to and I know I'll get there but man my sleep has been off but just to give you guys a little heads up on sleep I'm gonna put something up on the screen here and it's a, it's it's a study that shows the comparison of sleep deprivation so I'm going to put that up on the screen now. So this is a post from Danny Lennon at Sigma Nutrition and I want to give him full credit for the uh, infographic here. And um, basically it's a crossover study where they took people and who had seven to nine hours sleep normally and basically they restricted it to four hours uh, sleep for two nights and then in the other part of the study they gave them extended sleep for 10 hours and when comparing the four hours restricted sleep to the extended sleep for 10 hours you can see that leptin levels are lower by 18 percent you have 28 percent almost 30 percent higher ghrelin levels and then 24 percent nearly uh, in in hunger levels so leptin tends to be lower so it basically signals reduced uh, energy availability for the body so it basically drives you or makes you want to eat more food and then you've also got higher levels in ghrelin which is the uh, I suppose the signal from your stomach to your brain to tell you uh, to eat and tell you that you're hungry so elevated hunger levels and that's just off two nights of restricted sleep so hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of an insight into how sleep is massively 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 important to your goals in terms of your fat loss goals or in terms of your hunger levels and you know how sleep deprivation can really sort of affect your body and really affect your um, really affect your hunger levels and really also affect like your uh, your appetite anyway I'm supposed to be heading up to the gym for 10 o'clock we are doing a Metcon session today Jesus man I, do I look tired check them bags man oh my god It's either a sign of me getting old as fuck or just a bad week of sleep. <laughs> anyway, met Con this morning with Jason and Allison, and I am um, I've a meeting today. Well, I, I I'm I'm not 100% sure if the meeting's going to go ahead, but I'm supposed to have a meeting today, um, and it just happens to be in Roots and Green. And uh, yeah, I'll take you guys along. I'm going to fast until then. Uh, it's 10 o'clock and the meeting will probably be around 2 o'clock. 
um, but I'm going to fast until then and I am going to show you guys what I'm eating for today. So I'm going to take you guys on a full day of eating as well and also I got some questions that I was getting on my Instagram that I'm going to answer here and uh, yeah, give you guys a little bit of an insight. Like I've got a load of questions recently about, you know, just different topics in terms of like, you know, fat loss and training and where to start and motivation and stuff like that. So I'll throw in a couple of those little questions um, later on today. But anyway, right, time to get a coffee, time to get a gin. What are you, 10? 10, 10 off a thousand calories? Six. Six calories off a thousand calories. <laughs> so, we start off a little warm up on the cross trainers. Then, our first little Metcon was 10 deadlifts and 300 meter rowing, 10 rounds fast you can, so for time. And then, we done sprint on the treadmill. Jason got his done first because there was a shit ton of people on the, on the treadmill. So, Jason got his done first. Myself and Alison went in the cross trainers until a couple of people jumped off the treadmills. And then, Myself and Alison swapped over the skill mill and the regular treadmill for sprints. So we done, I think it was, we got eight rounds done. So about 12 minutes of uh, 30 seconds on, 60 off. And I am 1,050 calories in and it's literally just turned 75 minutes uh, of a workout. So 1,000 calories plus in 70 minutes in just over an hour. Sick workout. What I'll do is I'll put the workout in the description box below if you guys want to give it a try and uh, if you do give it a try let me know what you think hit me up on instagram at the body smith or uh, comment below and let me know if you've tried it all right workout done and oh, uh, let me get my bag into the car huh? workout done jumped into the steam room had a little steam and now, oh yeah, I actually have to fly into Aldi to grab a few bits and I'll show you guys what I get when I get there. But, uh, ugh, belt. But I have to fly in because it's quarter one now and I have my meeting at two o'clock. So, run into Aldi, back home, drop stuff in the house, then in for meeting. Still haven't eaten yet, um, but we're good to go. We're feeling good. All right, I'm in a hell of a rush here. It is quarter two, and I just got back from Aldi. I ended up getting stuck talking to somebody in Aldi, but anyway, I uh, just wanted to show you guys quickly what I got before I head back into town for my meeting. So starting off, Monster was on sale for 150 in, in Aldi, so I bought four cans. I've got a load of tubs of the fitness quark or the protein quark. Three tubs of this is like nearly 70 grams of protein, which is awesome. Two packets of apples, apples are my favorite, and they're now giving you eight instead of six. Yes, winner. That's sad that I'm getting excited about apples. I got two tubs of the low calorie, high protein ice cream that Aldi are now selling. I also picked up these. These are caramel coffees. These are actually delish. And vanilla coffees. They're also been sold in Aldi. And then the, uh, the strength 10 ones. Two tubs of Greek yogurt. And then two bags of frozen berries because that is like my go-to first meal lately. I'm having like a full tub of this with some um, protein put into it and then I'm having 200 grams of berries and lately this is my fave all brand I don't know why but love it so just sat down with Del who's the owner of Root and Green and uh, just gonna have a little bit of lunch but I'm just gonna show you guys some of the stuff that's on the menu it's insane so this is this is actually what I'm gonna order I am getting the protein skillet with cold chicken so a baked egg skillet, rich tomato sauce, black beans, and then I'm getting whole chicken on that. And we've got like sambos, superfood salads, quesadillas, we've got super bowls here. Unreal. Yes man, check this out. Oh that is hot. So pulled chicken skillet. With post eggs on top. That is so here we go next meal up three tubs of the quark cheese with 200 grams of berries two apples what is up just got home i had to 
bring my mum and my auntie into town and because my mum had a broken washing machine not that you guys need to know that nor do you care but yeah i had to bring her in and get a new washing machine so i've done that and now i'm back home they're gone for a little bit of food my mum my auntie and now i'm just going to chill out um for an hour that is the dishwasher i'm gonna move over here hopefully it'll be less noisy but uh yeah just gonna get a little snack and then chill out for a little bit and watch some netflix here is my snack one fulfill bar i'm gonna have a tub of the aldi ice cream and then two slices of bread with a little bit of butter and i love the heel of the bread especially when it's this bread here i don't know if you, i don't know what this one's o'neill's bread oh my god this is the nicest bread ever but the heel of it is the juiciest thing ever so a little bit of bread and butter protein bar and some chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream i'm just gonna go up and chill watch some netflix and devour these probably one of my favorite movies transformers and watch this. Yo! This room is a bomb site. I gotta get a tidy by tomorrow night because Vivian's home. Today has been a hella busy day. It's almost quarter past seven. And I actually have to go in and see my accountant this evening, which is not cool. But I'm gonna get these questions done. Um, I wanted to just go over some questions that I got on my Instagram recently. Um, and Okay, so just going to start off with the first question, and it is, what watch do you wear? Best watches for tracking exercise and sleep. Um, I wear the Apple Watch 4. What I'll do is I'll obviously I'll link it below the exact um, spec one. I, Vivian got it for me as a present for Christmas or my birthday. I'm probably going to be shot for this. But anyway, it was given to me as a gift by Vivian. It was an early Christmas present. That's what it was. It was an early Christmas present, and I didn't want to wait, and she gave it to me before Christmas. That's what it was. Anyway, I use an Apple Watch 4. I think it's the Nike, it is the Nike version that Vivian got me. Um, I have always had Apple Watches, so I don't really know um, about Fitbits, or I don't really know any, like I don't really know anything else. So I can only judge off using this, and I can honestly say it is incredible. Again, for track and sleep, it's very, very good. You have to get an additional app called Auto Sleep. That's the one I use. Fitbit, as far as I'm aware, has an inbuilt um, sleep tracker. The current Apple Watch, you have to have uh, an external app downloaded to the watch to actually track your sleep. And um, for tracking exercise and stuff like that, I think it's very, very good. I haven't got anything to compare it off, so I can't really say if it's good, bad, or indifferent, but I, once you're using it consistently, that's all that matters. I've got like, if you can see, one, two, three, four, I have five pages of questions. So I'm only gonna pick a couple out of this because I don't want this video to be hella long. So the next question is, at what body fat percentage to bulk or when to cut? Um, or is it just BS and just aim to be just aim to have a lean bulk? Um, being brutally honest, um, I personally think it's up to the person. Um, if you're happy where you're at and you're happy with your body shape and you're happy with how lean you look, well then that's great. If you're unhappy with it, well then cut. If you feel like you're, you know, a little bit too small, you want a wee bit more muscle, well then aim to put on a wee bit more size, and then obviously you do your bulk but what it would say to do is i think it's always better to start a bulk or a lean bulk let's say from a leaner position so like starting from a lower body fat percentage because um essentially you don't want to gain the whole idea is to gain muscle and not body fat um, and obviously as you bulk and have a calorie surplus you're going to gain an excess of body fat anyway but you want to sort of mitigate the amount you want to sort of be in control of the amount of body fat that you gain versus how much muscle you gain and you obviously want to gain more muscle than body fat so i would say cut first get lean and then look to do a sort of uh, i would do a reverse diet and then keep going into where you're in a caloric surplus and stay there do you know stay there for a little while but again muscle takes time to build so i don't think a lot of people i, th I don't think a lot of people are patient enough to see or reap the benefits of a bulk let's say quote unquote because people find it uncomfortable to be slightly you know feeling bigger and having a little bit more excess body fat and um, so i think people just sort of back out of it uh, you know at a, a, let's say maybe you know six or ten weeks let's say into a quote-unquote bulk and uh 
yeah, they sort of back out of it because they're gaining a little bit more size and they're feeling they might feel a little bit sluggish or you know bigger in themselves. Um, but yeah, I would say start leaner and then incrementally increase your calories. Do or did I ever play GAA or soccer growing up? Yes, I did. And this is from Tommy says, Love your channel. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much, buddy. Um, yes, I did play uh, <laughs> GAA, I played for the Geraldines up until maybe I was 20, maybe early 20s, and then I moved to Dublin and uh, started working and uh, had to obviously sack off football and get out because I couldn't commute back up and down. But yeah, I had a little bit of a bout with Loud as well. I had a little, very, very small stint with Loud as well when I was quite, when I was maybe in my mid teens, mid to late teens. Um, was okay, but was never good enough to, to keep it going. Goals for the year. So that comes in from Orla. Um, goals for the year. My goals for the year are I want to get to mid 80s. So my goal is to get to 85 kilos. I want to be really, really lean. I want to get to 85 kilos. And then I want to do a reverse diet, a proper reverse diet, because I've never actually, I've never actually done a controlled reverse diet. I've always just went back to sort of maintenance calories or, or slightly above it. Um, when I've ever got lean and I want to do it right this time I really really want to do it right I've always sort of just went got myself super lean and then just went back to quote-unquote eating normal Excuse me, which in turn will obviously bring more body fat a little bit more size and that's something that I Don't want this time So what I want for the year is to get to 85 kilos get really really lean reverse diet back up and sit probably around the, between the 90 to 92 mark question comes in how important is the timing of your meals so first of all meal timing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put up a like a sort of picture here so this is the nutrition hierarchy of needs essentially it's a it's a pyramid and going from the most important to the least important at the very top so obviously as you can see you've got behavior and lifestyle so sustainability at the very very base of the pyramid you've got energy balance macronutrients micronutrients and then slightly higher up you've got nutrient timing or meal timing. So if you haven't got, I suppose, the base level things down to a T, nutrient timing is is completely irrelevant. Um, if you haven't got your energy balance, your calories in versus calories out right, you haven't got your macronutrient breakdown right. Um, so just to give you guys an idea um, of what I suppose is more important and, and less important. So as you can tell by that, sort of pyramid your meal timing is sort of higher up the pyramid so it's kind of less important so the main things that you've got to worry about is caloric intake versus expenditure so for calorie balance like your energy expenditure calories in versus calories out and also the amount of protein that you're eating okay i'm only going to go two more questions okay is slimming world a good route to lose weight um slimming world is a brilliant uh, tool to lose weight so is ketogenic dieting so is um, you know the Atkins diet so is high carb dieting like every diet is good if you can stick to it do you understand where I'm coming from so you know slimming world will only work in a caloric deficit so if you want to lose weight you have to understand that you need to be eating less than you're expending so eating less calories than you're actually expending daily so irrespective of the method so if it's slimming world weight watchers keto high carb low fat if it's you know a high protein diet the carnivore diet whatever diet method you use you still have to understand the basics of you know caloric intake versus expenditure so your calorie balance has to be right so that's the main thing that you got to worry about and obviously sustainability so when you're looking at diets and when you're looking at specific you know dieting methods you have to look at the sustainability of that plan so you have to understand like you know is this something that I can see myself doing a year from now? And if it's not, well, then it's not the plan for you. Like, yes, it might kickstart you in the right way, but then what happens when you finish? You know, like, let's say a lot of people set goals and start off like, okay, I want to do Slim and More for X amount of weeks because of a holiday coming up. But when that holiday finishes or when you go, go on that holiday, the diet also finishes. So what then? So what I would look at is a more sustainable approach to dieting long term or more sustain not to dieting, a more sustainable approach to eating long term. So worry about, you know, what am I going to do after the fact? So do you get where I'm coming from? So think about it from that perspective rather than a, a very sort of blinkered vision of dieting in general. So think about long term sustainability and what can I do? You know, am I going to be able to do this a year from now, two years from now, three years from now? So understand that principle and 
losing weight would be very very simple last question vlogging the pros and cons and how to get started what inspired me and um, the pros and cons some of the pros are obviously you learn a new skill so obviously you learn how to video edit you and um, you learn how to use you know different programs and different editing tools on your laptop i think it also gives you confidence so you know i wouldn't have any problem with public speaking and stuff like that now because i've had the confidence to do something like this and um, so i think it given it's given me a boost of confidence to be able to sort of you know speak my mind publicly go on to instagram and you know chat and not really care about what anybody thinks about what i'm saying if you get me it just it's given me a little bit more confidence in myself to speak how i want to speak and do what i want to do and um, some of the cons of it is obviously you have to you know <sighs> you have to create content and sometimes that can be and as silly as that sounds it can kind of be stressful because like just to give you an example something that goes through my head is like what the fuck would people care about what i'm doing on a daily basis or why do people care about you know my daily life or what i'm doing and that's some of the shit that goes through your head when you're vlogging is like or when you have a youtube channel is like well what the fuck do they care about me you know why would they care about me or why would they care about you know what i'm doing it's just i'm going to the gym and i'm doing this and i'm doing that but it's it's you know so it's sometimes you can have like slightly negative thoughts about you know what people might think of you when you're putting certain things up if that makes any sense to you um cons any more cons there's way more pros than there is cons to vlogging and to starting a youtube channel and not that there was at the time when i started my youtube channel there wasn't very many people doing it and like my channel is still relatively small and I really appreciate every single one of you guys who watch these videos. I really, really do from the bottom of my heart. It's amazing. But there was nobody really doing it at the time when I first started my YouTube channel. I think the only sort of other person at the time that was doing it when I actually initially first started was, I think there was a couple of guys. Like, you know, you've got Rob Lipset and he's obviously blown up. You've got Kyle Mullen. Um... Who else started around the time when I started? Jesus, I think there, there, there wasn't many people who were actually vlogging in Ireland at the time. And I still don't know if there is many. Like, there isn't. Like, I think the likes of, like, Glenn Gillen, I think is his name. He's a guy from Dublin. He's doing very, very well. I think his channel's doing great. Um, and his content is a little bit more aimed at, I think, younger guys. Um, yeah. So, it's... Like, the, the pros really do outweigh the cons. That's, that's a hand on my heart. That's genuinely... What I feel is that the pros really outweigh the cons. Like there's, 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 there's. If I was to give you a list of, you know, pros here and cons here, there's, you know, there's not many cons on the list. But genuinely, what I would say is how to get started is just go for it. Like you know, like you, you wouldn't believe. Like the majority of this video actually was shot on my iPhone. So people think that, you know, like I'm sitting with my iPhone in my hand now and I have my camera here, but. Other parts of the video today were vlogged on my iPhone. So you don't, people think that you need, you know, big expensive cameras and, you know, all of the kit to, to go along with it. But like, you can genuinely do it on your iPhone. You just got to record like this rather than this because obviously YouTube is that way, right? So understand that when you're vlogging, you just got to do it like that. And oh, check this out. See my new case. Really cool, isn't it? Has my business logo on it. That's beside the point. But anyway. Yeah, vlogging, if you want to do it, go for it. That is genuinely my best advice for anybody who wants to start vlogging. Just start. Like, the great thing about vlogging is, and I suppose the great thing about social media is, there is only one you. And that's the unique thing about it. Like, there's only one me, so therefore, nobody's going to vlog the same way I will, and, you know, vice versa. Nobody's going to vlog the same way you will. So, if you're interested in doing YouTube, and you're interested in starting vlogging, just go for it because the unique thing about it is there is only one you and that's the great thing so you know people will you'll, you'll gather a, a, an audience that that relate to you and you know that you know want to be on that journey or want to you know watch your journey a, a, as you as you start your youtube channel but yeah that's pretty much it anyway it's literally it's 25 to 8 i gotta go i gotta go i gotta go have to go in and see my accountant okay check in with you guys in a bit yo Okay, it is 11 at night and I have been gone since I think half seven, quarter to eight. Get my accounts done with Sonia. Oh my God. Oh, I'm beginning to dread it slightly less and less, but I, I still don't enjoy it. But listen, look, I'm going to sign off this vlog. 
and uh, I've got a little bit of grub, I've got a ham sample over there going full country boy on it and uh, yeah I'm going to sign off from this vlog, thank you guys for watching, give the video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and uh, really appreciate you guys tuning in, I'll catch you guys in the next one.